And Father, we just surrender today to the word, the impartation. We open our hearts to be um, trained and tutored by you, Father, in such an excellent way that only the Holy Spirit can do. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for imparting in us the very measures that are needed for us to live good, sound Christian lives, believers that are active in the voice of the Father. And so we thank you for that today in Jesus' name by anointing us with your impartation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are facing daily a spiritual warfare and there is a spiritual war going on all around us. And as believers, we must take authority in the midst of the spiritual battle. The battles are there, but you know, we don't have to find ourselves beneath or under it. We are always above with the anointing of God that enables us because there's an enabling, working ability that works through us. Now, we limit or activate what God has got for us in that area. And if we do not realize we are at war, and the war is, is a spiritual war. It is a war against um, confusion, fear, false evidence appearing real. And when bad things happen, there is a spiritual influence, and the word is influence. And you know, I heard the word so loud and clear this week. Either we find ourselves influenced by it or under the influence of the evil importation, or we will find ourselves totally protected, strong, and well able to see through the eyes of Jesus, see the solution. But the devil is behind much of the evil that occurs on a daily basis. He's behind it all. So when we know who the culprit is, it is very easy to bind and break and uproot the evil assignments. Remember, it's not people. It is Satan who's behind it all. And he's trying to put an influence over the believers. And he's zooming in on trying to see if you've got faith and even question whether you have faith. Question, is there really a God? Absolutely. Because otherwise we wouldn't be here testifying of his goodness. Amen? And so God's plan is to bless us at all times. That is his plan. But the enemy's plan is to destroy us. And you will not allow it. So when adversity or any other appearance tries to interject in your life, you have to uproot it and cancel it. Because if you receive it and you're passive about it, it's not going to be right. Amen? I had um, one evening um, uh, in the week that I had quite a, a lot of disruptions in the, in the evening. Anybody know what disruptions are? Suddenly there's that sound and then your alarm is doing a funny thing and then that is doing a funny thing. And I knew instantly it was the enemy that wanted to steal robbers of sleep and rest. So I just bound it, and I turned around, and I went to sleep, and it just settled down. So if you will think, oh, what is that? Should I go and check that? What is this? Should I look at that? He's going to put you on a run. And his goal is to wear you out so that the next morning you wouldn't be refreshed and be ready for the day. So remember, his plan is to destroy, but the Lord's plan is to bless you, bless you with a peaceful night's rest, bless you with clarity, bless you with revelation, bless you with wisdom. All of that is so necessary, and God wants that for us. And failure to realize this only limits the victory we can experience in our lives daily. God wants victory for you, and he wants you to experience it. He doesn't want you to be just next to it and not taste and see that the Lord is good. There was a time in our worship this morning that I heard the Lord say loud, taste and see that I'm good. 
And it was, it was there. It was right there. You could literally tangibly taste the goodness of God. You could taste his presence and experience it. So how are we going to do this? By standing firm on the word of God. That's how we're going to have victory at all times. We can defeat the attacks of the enemy. And the word is defeat. You need to defeat it by the written word of God. Apply the written word of God. So that the written word of God puts an arrest on what the enemy is trying to do. And if we don't interrupt it, we will fail to experience the fruit of his righteousness. Amen. So we must be strong. That is a decision God is giving you today. Choose to be strong. Choose to walk in the strength of the Lord on a daily basis. And how do we walk in the strength? By putting this bar every day on his armor to fight off the devil. You see, the enemy wants to come upon us on a daily basis. But when you dressed with the armor, you fight him off. And you do it by one word from God. And you resist him. And he cannot touch the elect. Because you remember, we elected by the Father. We anointed with his strategy plans. And if we walk out daily by the preparation of the gospel, meditating on the word, one word from God, we saw this morning, he can talk a half an hour on one little scripture by opening it up and feeding off the meaning of the revelation of the insight he has for you. And so meditating on it means that you apply, you eating the word. Do you remember in the word of God it says, eat the scroll, right? And the scroll is the written word of God reading you your rights. Amen to that. And how do we fight with spiritual warfare in there? We should put on truth number one, who we are in Christ Jesus, who he is in this world, who Jesus is in the world. He says, I have overcome this world. And he did. All the evil of it, he overcame. And he says, if you live as overcomers, and that's something really we can do a whole sermon on being an overcomer. I love that. When I hear that, it just starts to uh, like bubble up in me, being an overcomer. And it's because the truth makes you free. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb, right? His righteousness, not you who's trying to be good and not me who's trying to be good. It's wearing His righteousness. His peace is upon us. His faith is working through us. His salvation, he has given us, and the spirit that shows us how. Isn't that beautiful? That's good spiritual warfare. When we remember that it takes the truth of the Lord, it takes his righteousness, it takes his peace that he gives us, and the faith we choose to walk by through salvation we received, and the spirit that consistently ushers our footsteps on a secure land. We don't have to stand on quicksand. Quicksand is, should it, should it not? Maybe, maybe not. Is it, is it not? Lots of questions. That's quicksand. Because that's not secure in him. Because when you're secure in him, God will give you a download in a second. And it can be the size of a book that he downloads in you. And you know you're secure in that. Amen? So let's have a look at Scripture this morning. I believe the Scripture is really what we need. We're going to find these keys we were just talking about in the book of Ephesians, chapter 10, verse 19. I'm going to look at it from the message translation. It says in verse 10, And that about wraps it up. Did you ever hear when something is wrapped up? It is the whole full parcel has just been given to you, the gift of it. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So just look at your neighbor, say, you and I are strong in him. We have his strength in us. And that's 
that wraps it up, right? Now let's look at the next. So take everything the master has set out for you. Take it. He doesn't want you to negotiate with it. He wants you to take it. So when you take what the master has for you, which is our father in heaven, he says he has set out for you. So it's all been prepared. It's been set out for us. Well-made weapons. I love that. So there's no flaw. There's nothing that can go wrong in it. It's well uh, shaped, well-made weapons of the best material. I love that. There's no flaw in it whatsoever. Amen? And he says, and put them to use so that you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws your way. What will you stand up through these well-made well weapons of the best material? You will put them to use. And so if you put them to use, it's better than just not activating it. Some people live and they call themselves Christians, but they don't activate what God has given them. They're always living through someone else's faith or someone else's revelation. But God says when his spirit is present, we all receive from him because we open our ears to the spirit. Amen to that. And he says in verse 12, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from. You know, I don't know if you ever did uh, um, running at school or at varsity or whatever. Let me tell you, you could feel that burn in your throat when you <laughs> ran that distance and you got to the end of the line. You know, when you get to the end of the line, you're supposed to throw yourself into it, right? So that you can, you can win. You don't approach it like, like this. You literally throw yourself into it so that you win. And if we don't throw ourselves into the Word of God, we don't benefit from it. And sometimes you've got to get past yourself because yourself wants to say, I'm tired, too, but not enough time this morning, got to rush, got to get this, got some that to do and this to do. Throw yourself into the Word because that's how you're going to win. And he says there, um, it's not just an afternoon athletic contest, uh, contest that will walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. You can't forget about one touch from the Lord. You can't forget about what he does and what it means to you. And this is for keeps. I love that. Kids normally talk. Is this for keeps? And you know what? When we've got childlike faith, we know this is for keeps. Amen. And this is for keeps. A life or a death fight to the finish against the devil. Did you notice it didn't say against people? It didn't say against flesh. It says it's against the devil and all his angels. Did you hear that? This morning there was an angelic presence of the household of faith. And I see them sprinkle, sprinkle over the people the, the uh, sweetness of the Spirit of God. Because they're there to serve you. Commissioned by the Father. I love that about the Lord. So don't even look at anybody around you. Just get connected to the Spirit and just benefit so much more by what He's got for you. And it is a lifestyle. And if you follow that lifestyle, you will have no need for anything more than that. Verse 13 says, be prepared. Did you hear that? So if we don't prepare and we don't prepare our footsteps... With the gospel, we will find ourselves weighed down by the cares of the world. He says, you're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Did we hear that? So you can't run this race without Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit, which he freely gives to all that asks. Take up, take all the help you can get Every weapon. Now we're going to look at those weapons. God has issued. So who gave it to us? Father God. 
So Father God commissioned it, and He gives it to you, and it's as to utilize, activate in our lives. So that when it's all over, when is the when it's all over? When we get raptured. Amen. When you fought the good fight and you're ready to go home. Amen. Who's ready to go home? Have you fought a good fight already? Have you kept your faith? Have you walked in the integrity of the word? Amen. He says, so that when it's all over, but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. So you won't be lying down there discouraged, disconnected, hopeless. No, when you fight a good, effective fight, you will not be discouraged and lie down on the ground and the enemy beat you up because your faith has made you well. This morning we heard that a lot, the confirming your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Putting your trust in God has made you well. Amen to that. So in verse 14, the New King James Version, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Amen. Having put on, this is how we put the well-made weapons on. Gird our waist with the truth. If it's the lie that the enemy is trying to give you and say you you are not going to have enough, don't be worried about that because God says sufficient is his grace daily. God says sufficiently I will supply daily what you have need of. But you'll walk it by faith. Amen? That's the truth. Girding your waist with truth. Have you noticed that if you gird your waist, you stand up stronger? Amen? I mean, body lifters and guys that train with weights, they gird their waist with a strong belt, don't they? Because it keeps them strong and upright. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness and family of God, as believers, when we allow things to injure our heart, we are not wearing our breastplates. We are wide open. Our hearts are wide open. And you know what? If you've got the breastplate of righteousness on you, you don't abscond your position. You don't run away and go and fix it another way with emotions. You wear your breastplate because if God's anointed you to be there and God's put you there, you better make sure you wear your your belt of truth. Because God says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care about you. But if you're holding on and you're maneuvering and making decisions and doing all this and causing this undercurrent in people's lives and your life, you're not walking by faith. Because you'll know when you're in a current. And a current is what the enemy is bringing against you and you're moved emotionally by it. And so if you move by it, please get your belt of truth back on. Because the Lord says, I will fight the battle for you. I have given you all things. He said that in his word. He says, ask and I will give it to you. Right? Having your breastplate on means that you don't allow your heart to be troubled. You don't allow yourself to fight the battle in the flesh. Because if you move by the emotions, you're in the flesh. You've got to stand tall, unafraid. And if you're afraid of not having enough, we better get our breastplate back on. Better get our belt back on with the truth. God says, I will take care of you. Did he not say that? So we have to tell the devil we know that. And we have to tell the devil, you cannot put fear on me. You cannot make me afraid of not having enough because God says that sufficient is his grace daily. He is said he even gives the birds their feed and their measure a day. And so sufficient it is there. And verse 15 says, and having shot your feet, shot, so the commission of your footsteps, making right decisions with a preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace. Peace is so amazing. 
when your heart feels troubled and you feel really you've just been through a real crushing experience, just run back to the peace. Say, Father, I submit this to you. I give this to you. I'm not going to hold on to this. I give this to you. And I ask for your peace. Because as long as you've got peace in your heart, you can make right decisions. But without peace, you can make no good decision. Des good decisions comes out of peace. Your reliance in the Lord. Amen to that. Amen. Verse 16 says, above all, taking the shield. Now, you know what? If we're not standing with a shield in front of us, when the fiery darts and the missiles come your way, we'll be wide open without the shield. The shield of faith is so important because the shield of faith brings protection. It brings a covering of God's goodness and it commissions God's plan. So it says you will not, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So who is bringing the missiles against us? The wicked one. What does he want to do? He wants to pierce the truth with lies. He wants to pierce our hearts and put us in sorrow. He wants us to become afraid about who we are and where we find ourselves at. Now, if we are allowed, we're actually becoming totally undressed and we will not taste success. Amen to that? So verse 17 in the message translation says, and salvation are more than words. Did you hear that? Salvation is more than words. It is a way of living. Learn how to apply them. You'll need them throughout your life. God's word is an indispensable weapon. Did you hear that you can't dispense it? You can't turn it to nothing. For the word spoken in faith with the truth, it pierces the lie and causes a ripple effect, right? Amen to that. Verse 18 says, in the same way, prayer is essential. Did we hear prayer is essential? Prayer is essential in the ongoing did you hear ongoing warfare? Ongoing warfare? Pray hard and pray long, says the message translation. Pray for your brothers and your sisters, not just for yourself, for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Don't fall asleep, with other words. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drops out. You know, that's why we pray for one another, is that we don't fall behind and we don't drop out, out of the race. And that is very important in the commission of God's kingdom. We pray for one another. I love praying for the church. I love praying for people that I know. Amen to that. Because it definitely availeth much. It causes us to run strong. So Ephesians 6 verse 19 says to us today, amen, and don't forget to pray for me. Pray that I'll know what to say and have the courage to say it at the right time. Boldness with other words. Telling the mystery to one and all, the message that I, and this is who is this? Paul speaking, the jailbird preacher. What a beautiful way of putting it. He really was the jailbird preacher. Amen. That I am, am responsible for getting out. Did you see there? That I am. He's the jailbird preacher and responsible for getting out. And he did get out. Amen. He did get a good result. We're still speaking about him right now. We're still learning so much from, he, from the word, from the books that were written. In all of this solitude. And it wasn't easy circumstances. Couldn't put the coffee machine on. Couldn't get a softer pillow. It was right there in the downtown, in the sewage parlor, 
that he wrote most of the books. Isn't that amazing? So what stops you from doing the will of the Father? Is it anything that compares to his love right there? And remember, how was he crucified? Was he, was he pierced and was he persecuted big time? He was. Stephen received the stones, right? And what did he do? What was his last words to God? God, forgive them, for they know not what they have done. Do not hold the sin against them. And we as Christians, we love vengeance, don't we? Want to get that one back. Want to get that one back. Want to just say this about that person. Is that not what it is? Vengeance? Could we say that our love walk is secure? Amen? So the devil's plans, I'm not talking about identification because if you can't identify, you can't pray effectively. You have to be able to identify with the wisdom of God to manage something. Right? So the devil's plans for our life opposes God's plan. Always remember, it's trying to oppose what God has called you to do. But we know for a fact that Jesus was telling the disciples what was to happen to him. He was revealing the Father's will. And remember the Father's will, but Peter responded under the influence of the devil at that time. And how did Jesus uh, handle it? He says, get behind me, Satan. Right? So when Peter rebuked Jesus, and Jesus had to speak directly to the devil operating through Peter. So can the devil operate through believers? Yes, he can. He can. You can't say it doesn't happen. If you are tempted as well, remember, that temptation is the devil trying to use you to operate in that, that weakness. So Matthew 16, 21 then Jesus made it clear to his disciples that it was now necessary. And I love that term. It was now necessary for him to go to Jerusalem. So why did he go there? Love motivated him. But it was necessary. Why was it necessary to take us out of captivity? To make a way for us so that we could also enjoy eternal life spend in heaven. And that is why it was necessary. Submit to an ordeal of suffering at the hands of the religious leaders. Did you read that as well? So do you think that anybody that is religious will sometimes exercise some kind of thing against you? Because it's, it's darkness against light. Right? Right? And he was killed, and then on the third day, to be raised up alive. And the term is alive. He wasn't dead. He was alive. He was alive. So he didn't remain dead. He was raised up alive. And he paid for us. Verse 22 says to us today, Peter looked at him and took him. In his hand, protesting, impossible master. This is the message translation. Impossible master. Is everything possible with God? Yes, it is. So who is he to say impossible master? The devil knew that 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 he had planned will be impossible for man to relive and tell the story. But let me tell you, this was God's ordained son. And only he could take the beating that he did. That can never be, Peter says. He was trying to cancel it. So when we use the terms, that can never be. We're canceling it. And how often do we as believers say, it can't be. We are limiting God. Verse 23 says, but Jesus didn't swerve. And you know, we can, we've got to ask ourselves the questions. Do I swerve easily? 
do I swerve easily? Does the devil get it right to swerve me in a different direction? And Peter, Jesus answered and he said, Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. You have no idea how God works. The message translation says it quite nicely. Amen. You have no idea how God works. Amen. <laughs> so any time anyone tries to counteract or contradict, and this is what Peter was trying to do, contradict, but the, the um, influence was Satan. Satan darkened his mind of understanding. And that's why I couldn't understand what was happening. And contradict the word of God, that person is demonically influenced. Did you hear that? Demonically influenced? Do we allow? And that's another question to ask ourselves. Do I allow the enemy to influence me with a demonic presence? When it's no unity, it is opposing, right? The body of Christ do experience a lot of retaliation. That opposing spirit working through one another, slowing us down, opposing the truth. Because sometimes we desire other things than what the Lord has purposed. And God's purposes are always better for us, is it not true? Than just being a good pal. Amen? So that is a person that is demonically influenced, wanting something that God didn't ordain. And I think we've really got to give attention to that because we're talking about authority. Are we permitting demonic influences to speak to us? That's something we need to recognize and identify. Because when it's hopelessness, it is under the key. That's no longer a force with uh, faith working. So did the enemy get it right to put a lie in the heart and another expectation? And when we counsel, this is something we need to address. What has influenced you like this? What influence have you allowed? And those truths in love is necessary because I see a lot of people receive counsel and a lot of people get prayer, but they don't stay free as they go back to the same influence. The strategy plans at Satan, and if you look at the blueprint, you'll have a look, okay, that was a weakness in my flesh. Now I'm still living it, and then I have victory, and I go back. And there's a lot of us that have gone back to our childhood. Vulnerabilities, hurts, pain, and then we live our future that way. And if abandonment or rejection or whatever is there, have a look at mannerisms. When you want a single, take a person and keep them for you, that's control. When you're trying to influence them over to your no and keep everybody at bay, that's witchcraft. Are we still busy with the same methods? Is that the reason we don't taste the freedom? Those are things we need to give attention to because our authority will be influenced by the methods we use. And if we allow those methods, they will steal from us. And they will cause a disruption in the flow of God's goodness. And you know, the enemy always looks for a landing place. He looks to see what can I land on them again. And sometimes you feel the impact of the landing. And instantly you're discouraged. And instantly your heart is like heavy. Who's noticed a heavy heart at some stage? Anybody ever experience a whoa? How heavy that was. News sometimes, demands sometimes can, boom, put something heavy in your heart. And you feel so overwhelmed at that moment, but you have to recognize that the enemy is trying to use this 
to get to your heart. Because he wants to disrupt your victory. Amen? And if we allow that, we allow demonic influences in our lives. We have to hear this today. Because if we're allowing demonic influences to have a say in our lives, it's only geared to steal from us and to remove our victory and our right. Amen? So anyone living a godly life will suffer persecution. That's the good news today. (laughs) You'll suffer a bit of persecution. But you know what we to be, not just the duck that rolls it off your back. We to do something effective with that. Let the love of God increase in you. And let it be a good testing ground to see, can you still walk in love? Can you still respond in love? Even though they knifed you in the back. Can you still respond in love? Have you still got the power? And I think those are questions with authority we need to understand. Is your love walk intact? Have you still got authority? I'm not talking about when you need to walk in wisdom and you need to draw lines at times. Sometimes you need to draw a line for the saving grace of someone building a foundation on the love of God. And we have to manage things. But our love walk will always be intact. Always have openness towards the person or the people. Because your love of Jesus, you can't love with your own love. You don't have what it takes. But when the love of God is increased in you, you can love with his love. And you can look past all of the rough edges. You know, the problem is people are looking for perfection. Do it my way or the highway. And that's not going to work for us. Because then we play God over their lives. And only God can move upon their hearts to change. But our responsibility is to love them unconditionally with the love of God. And leave it to God to bring them to their place where they choose life and not death. Are we all hearing today? 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ, Jesus will suffer persecution. There's your proof. Out of the Spirit's mouth. Everyone who desires to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. Remember the term Christ Jesus is the one that was persecuted on the cross. He already paid our penalties. The Christ, the Jesus, will suffer persecution for the name's sake. It's not because of you, it's because of the name that is above every name. That's who they're attacking. So if we get in the flesh, we'll think it's personal. It isn't. It's because of the name that you are carriers of the light. So it comes to steal the light out of you and pull you into darkness. So always remember that's the wrestling match. It is there to try and pull you over to a lesser uh, position. And you can't ever trade the goodness of God. It's not worth it. But it says that the thief will always come to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to bring us an abundant life. Not just life, abundant. And the abundant life, we can read about it in John 10 verse 10 and verse 11. The thief does not come except So he doesn't just show up to just hover around. He's there for an assignment. And if we don't recognize the assignment, we'll fall in the trap. So he says he comes except to steal. So what is he trying to steal? Is a question we need to ask. Our joy, 
because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The peace of God will guard our footsteps. So if we give up joy and we give up peace, we give up strength, we give up direction, we cannot allow that. And he says, and to destroy. So after he's killed your dream, killed your vision, killed your good health, that's, and he brought poverty upon you, he then wants to destroy you and take you down. But you're not going to allow that because you're more than a conqueror. You're called to victory. You stand in victory at every time. And he says, but I have come that they, he didn't say all, he said they. I love the term when the Lord uses the word they. He's pointing out the ones that receive his truth and will respond by what he says. He didn't say all, because not all choose. Some people are passive in their faith. Now, we're not going to be passive in our faith. We are the they. Amen? Um, as we were growing up, uh, we would tell stories. And my brother, my oldest brother, had gone to be with the Lord. He loved always opposing. If he said, they said so, he'll say, who's the they? He wanted specifically to hear who's the they. <laughs> but yeah, you can't oppose the word. Because, yeah, the Lord also uses they, and that they may have it more abundantly. So the ones that choose, they get the abundant interventions. Just say to your neighbor, I'm one of them. I receive the interventions from the Lord, direct, in Jesus' name. I'm the they. They choose. they not passive. Amen. And verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now ask yourself the question, are you a sheep or a goat? Goats always break out. They go and look for something better. But a sheep knows a shepherd's voice. When the sheep are planted by the shepherd, they don't go and look for another, like a goat, a greener pasture, a little greener, more exciting there, whatever. Goats always break free. We used to, in the early days, when we just started the church here, we had goats that were given to us. And they multiplied very quickly. And then there was such an anointing, we actually had triplets that were born as well. And we had a twin that was born on the land. But it was the most amazing thing to see. Help them through it. Uh, Bella was a very good productive mother. And uh, Bella received her twins. And Bella had the triplets. But a, f oh, a few hours after they were born, they were jumping and curtsy like that with the little back legs. Jumping out like they were so excited to be here. It's the most amazing thing. Always happy. Always playful. It's, it's really special when they've got territory to run. And they were very mischievous. Very mischievous and always had remains in mind. <laughs> so Satan judged us by our actions. His judgment is only by your actions. He loves to judge if you move by that. He loves to judge if you're sad by that. And then he turns up the heat. And he brings another measure of whatever it is if we allow it. That's why the Lord says, choose this day. Who will you serve? Will you serve him and his action plans? Or will you continue to serve the Lord with all your heart? So every action... Always remember that has a spiritual consequence, whether for good or for evil. Every action has a spiritual consequence. And what we do can either empower Jesus to give us life or empower the enemy to destroy us. So it's either black or light, either dark 
or light. There isn't a gray area in between. And whoever we healed ourselves to, and remember when we practice any sinful nature, we healed to it. We bow our knee to it. And it starts owning us. And it says, if you obey it, it becomes our master. And when we recognize it and we say, I will serve only one master. In this condition, this action, I choose to oppose. So when we choose to oppose it, we walk free. And we become the servant of whatever we bow our knee to. Amen to that. So we heard already today that the Lord is speaking to us strong and clearly about having authority over everything. And this is true, whether it is to sin unto death or whether it is obedience unto righteousness. So Romans 6 verse 16 says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, slaves to obey, you are the one slave from you whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. You know what? Many times we, we ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be righteous. I just want to be righteous, to be in right standing with you. But if you're looking for yourself to have righteousness, we'll fail. Because we need the righteousness of Jesus Christ to enable us to conquer whatever weakness the enemy tries to bring our way. Note that the weakness he brings your way, but the righteousness of Christ working through you rebukes him and puts him in his place. Amen to that? So what are we looking at? The devil is the father of sin, right? But God is the father of righteousness. So where do we get righteousness? From our father. And he freely gives to whoever who asks. Isn't that beautiful? So freely you have received, so freely you can respond and give with his righteousness. Isn't that excellent? If we don't have the shield of faith and respond by faith, we're not going to have victory. And our belt of truth is so important. And the preparation of the gospel and our salvation we receive covers us and keeps us in right standing with our Father. Are you guys happy that you have been given this as you've requested it? Amen to that? Then let us pray today. Whatever you are battling with, whatever you are going through that you're not happy about, the Lord's enabling working ability is there for all of us to stand tall and to receive what he has for us. And only he is the one that can uh, enable us to be conquerors. Only his victory that is sweet is what we can live by. Victory I have given you. Freely receive it. Receive it, but use it. Activate it. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day and we recognize that if we fight it in our own flesh, we're not going to have success. If we make plans and we lean on our own understanding, it's not the same as being directed by the wisdom from above. Solomon was so right. He asked, he says, give me wisdom, Lord, and understanding. And God gave him more than that. He gave him a wisdom that could produce great wealth. Many spoke about the giftings on his life. And we today, Father, we come as your children. And we thank you this day that we can ask and we can believe and receive by faith the enabling working ability to walk in your righteous plan, to be planted in the household of faith and to operate with a great victory God has got for us. 
We believe your word today. And we know that we've even heard in the Bible, help me with my unbelief. And Father, you set them free, granted them the petition of their heart and brought great victory. This morning we receive the victory in advance as you empower and impart into each and every one here within the sound of my voice. We thank you, Lord, one word from God can change every area of our lives. We receive it in advance, the truth that pierces every lie the enemy has tried to keep the children of God in captivity. And today, every yoke is broken off of our lives. All the lies of the enemy is pierced with the truth this morning. And no longer will the enemy get it right to hold back what belongs to us. So we open our hearts to receive the empowerment, the revelation and understanding to our hearts. And we choose to put on the armor of God and stand firm in the promises of our Lord. We give you praise. We honor you for that. And this morning, if you're here and you're saying, I don't even know if I'm saved. I don't even know if I'm properly living my life for eternal, for an eternal good outcome. God says, come, just as you are. When you hear my word and you receive it by faith, I will answer your very request. And if you believe you've made so many mistakes, how can God reinstate you? God says, come as you are. You don't have to qualify first. It's through the blood of Jesus that you qualify. Just come as you are, and I will hear, and I will answer your very request this morning. And you might be in this place and say, but I've messed up. I've messed up so badly. I don't even know how to fix it. God says, wisdom is from above. I will grant you wisdom. If you need to know how, I will show you but you cannot do it on your own. You have to do it through me. I will give you the Holy Spirit. He will be your helper. He will teach you. He will empower you and show you who you meant to be through me, says the Lord. You recognize that you've messed up. You've made mistakes. Don't let that keep you away. From the goodness of God. This morning we can ask God to forgive us. We can ask him to receive all of our wrong and to set us free. To wash our hands, to wash our hearts white as snow with his righteousness, his blood that changes everything. If you're in this place and you're not proud of everything in your life, I want you to stand to your feet. If you feel I've made so many mistakes, I'm so disqualified in places in my life. And I want that right. I want to be in complete fellowship with the Father. I want to be in a place where I know that I qualify. That I can stand the test of time. I want to be forgiven. And if you're in this place and you want to be forgiven and you've spoken negatively over something, over your life, over your job, maybe over your boss, maybe over people, and you want that fixed, you don't want the enemy to use that dirt to trip you up, then stand to your feet. Be accountable. doesn't matter what people think, but it matters what God believes and thinks. If you've been disqualified in the race and you know you're not running as strongly as you used to and you know there's something that is holding you back, would you stand to your feet so that the Lord can come and look at your heart and impart what is needed. If you're in this place and 
you say, you know what? As hard as I try, I still make mistakes. Today, God wants you to cast your cares upon him so that he can put his ability working through you and cause you to stand tall and strong. How awesome it is that when we come to the Lord, he hears us. So this morning, will you pray this prayer together? Father, forgive me, for I've messed up in so many areas. I believe today that Jesus Christ offered up his life for me. I receive forgiveness and I receive God's intervention today for a satisfying life, a good life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming upon my life. Help me, change me, renew my life to bring glory to God. I believe Jesus, his blood that was shed on the cross has changed my life. I receive it right now. Forgiveness, his anointing that breaks yokes in my life. I believe I'm a child of the Most High God. Forgiven, empowered today. And I receive it in full measure in Jesus' name. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. Hallelujah. How awesome is the Father. I want to ask that if there's anyone in the church today that would like a special prayer straight off to the service is to come forward and just see the pastors and let them just pray a prayer of agreement with you and receive it in faith. And I believe that the Lord has answered and heard your prayers. May you be blessed and may you walk out the plan that God has set out for you, victorious in everything that you put your hands to in Jesus' name. And if the Lord has touched your life today, would you give him a praise offering today? Amen. <laughs> would you thank the Lord for... He is gracious. He's good all the time. And I know that if you've received something special today, whether it is a testimony, whether it is a healing, whatever, let us have your praise reports and let us share it with the world because many need to know that the Lord is good and that he shows no partiality to anyone. There's no favoritism with a father. Just as you are, he says, come as you are and you shall be blessed in Jesus' name. I say shalom to you all today. God's peace, his perfect peace with nothing broken, nothing missing in your lives. In Jesus' name this week, may you be blessed beyond whatever can limit you in anything. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah for that. If you would like to sow a financial seed into Teresa Westerby Ministries International, download the Zapper app from the App Store. Scan the QR code on your screen and sow a financial seed into the ministry. Thank you for contributing financially and helping us reach more souls for the Kingdom of God. One word from God changes everything. Thank you for joining us today. We were so excited to have you. And remember that one word from God changes everything. Would you consider today to sow a seed into this ministry? If this word has blessed you, remember someone has sowed a seed for you to receive today. And as you go forth, let us know how the word impacted you today. And I believe with all my heart that we can enlarge the kingdom of God by winning souls daily. God bless you from Dr. Teresa Westerby. I say shalom to you today.